Hi guys. Um, right. I'm doing a football video. Um, okay. Basically, I'm going to talk about Celtic, my team today. Um, a lot of things are going on at the moment. It's transfer window time. Um, Celtic have signed uh, two new players um, recently, so you know I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about the mass Celtic are in. I'm going to talk about players who've left the club. Um, the spaces need to be filled by the club, and there's a lot of them. Um, I'm going to talk about, basically, this could be an hour podcast. Um, you know, so, yeah, I hope I hope uh, you will listen and learn. I didn't want to do this live. So, yeah, um, basically what I want to say is let's start with goalkeeper. Uh, last season, uh, we lost Fraser Foster from Lowen from Southampton. Um, he was an immense player for us. Um, really, really like a top, top goalkeeper. And as, as a replacement, the Celtic board went out and they actually spent money on a goalkeeper, Vasilius Varkas, who basically came in and was absolutely shite. We spent four point five million on on this guy. Um, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but yeah, um, he didn't make one valuable save last season. Where I thought he saved us three freaking points. Um, it was like if a shot was on target that was going in the net. Anything, any anything, anything easy. Went back to him. I felt like he's going to make a mistake. I felt, you know, he just felt so nervous last season. Um, you know, easy shots came in at him, you know, and he was dropping balls. He didn't look comfortable when it came from uh, cr uh, catching crosses. Um, he dropped the ball a number of times trying to come for crosses instead of even f uh, fisting it out. Uh, Scott Bean came in last season. He has a mistake in him. He ain't good enough. He ain't good enough to play for Celtic uh, or be number one goalkeeper. Neither of these two guys are good enough. Uh, what I'm hoping is Barkas proves 4.5 million correct with performances this season where he looks excellent because it looks like we're not going to buy a new goalkeeper. And it's really an area where I think we need to be strengthened in. Um, you know, so, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go left back position because this is going to get complicated. Last season, last season we had uh, David Laxalt from AC Milan on loan. Um, he has gone back to AC Milan. He'll probably be sold. He did not perform well last season. We bought Greg Taylor uh, the January before that, um, you know, basically as a replacement for um, Kieran Tierney, who's gone to Arsenal, and he's a beast. He was a beast at Celtic. He was a beast at Arsenal. And for three years, he was our best player. And Greg Taylor has come in. He's tried his best. Lax Salt came in. At times, Laxalt's a workhorse. Uh, he's a Uruguayan international. You know, he came in last season on loan from AC Milan. And when I see him play for Uruguay, he's a top quality player. And last season when he played for Celtic, it was like he couldn't even cross the ball properly. And Greg Taylor has the same issue as well. Um, you know, Greg Taylor is faster than uh, Laxalt at left back. Laxalt's got better positioning, but if Laxalt's going forward and he crosses the ball and hits the first guy on, on the counter attack and he's trying to get back, he's just slow. He's just slow to get back, and a lot of times we were exposed down the left-hand side. Uh, Greg Taylor um, has bad positional sense. He gets beat off the dribble a lot at left back. And Greg Taylor is the same problem <laughs> as Laxalt. He can't cross a freaking ball coming from uh, a Kieran Tierney 
who could cross a frickin' ball. Like, Kieran Tierney could defend. He was good going forward, up and down the wing and left wing. And when it came to the final ball, he picked people out in the box. And these two guys, these two guys last season, they hit, they, you know, they hit the first guy probably more times than I could count. So it's either Greg Taylor and Laxalt, and both of them did the same thing. Um, you know, and yeah, uh, Laxalt's left, you know, and we need, we need a new left back. I know who I want in there. Um, Aaron Hickey from Belonga, you know, um, I think he'd be an exciting young player to come in. He's, you know, he's a highly touted, he's a highly touted young, young man. I'd like to see him come in there. Um, center back is interesting because uh, last season we had Shane Duffy. Christopher Iyer looks like he's going to Brantford for $13.5 million. He's on his last year of his contract. And we got $13.5 million for him, plus a $1.5 million add-on, it looks like. So $15 million quid. Uh, Shane Duffy's left. Christopher Julian last season was injured a lot. So that only leaves Stephen Walsh um, as as our, you know, and, and he's young, what? He's 19, 20 years old. You know, and he came in at the end of last season, and he performed he performed well. He's probably the best of our defenders last season when he came in. He was probably the most consistent, you know. And, yeah, we need cover in there it's quick because I don't know if Christopher Julian could play 50, 60 games a season. I just don't know if he can. You know, so, yeah. Um, Kyle Stahlfeld has been highly linked. Apparently that deal will be done soon at center back. You know, we've been linked with Mario uh, Vukovic, who's a Croatian center back. Starfield is a Swedish center back. So, you know, um, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the Kovic deal looked like Celtic were very interested in that very early on in the summer, and that seemed to cool down. Um, you know, uh, Starfield uh, looks like uh, the deal will be done soon. You know, and, yeah, uh, any cover there, because Christopher Julian, I don't know if he can play for 50, 60 games a season. Stephen Welsh is still young. You know, um, Starfield can't come in. Uh, we signed the young center back from uh, Sheffield Wednesday. You know, he's a good young player. You know, but, you know, he's, he, you know he, he didn't play a lot of football last season. You know, so he's a potential signing. Um, Odegidi, um, he's Dutch. He looks powerful. He's 6'2". He's a powerful lad. You know, he looks a bit rash in tackles from what I've seen from him in preseason. He can play right back as well. I think his natural position is center back. But I don't know if he'll play 30, 40 games a season, 50 games. I don't know if he can do that. So, you know, or if he'll be trusted to do that, you know. So, yeah, if we get Mario uh, Vukovic and Starfield in the door with Christopher Iyer leaving, with losing Shane Duffy, you know, Christopher Julian's injury worries, we need two players in the door as soon as possible. So the Celtic board can get that done. That would be great. You know, Starfield uh, looks like he'll be signing um, maybe Monday or Tuesday, next week so that'd be good at uh, right back this, this is a fucking mess um Christopher G uh no we only have one right back and he ain't good enough to play for Celtic he's been at Celtic since he was a boy Anthony Ralston I've never I've never seen a game one where I was impressed with what he's got right um, Celtic have been linked with Brandon Sapi, a young Rennes right back, a French French uh, nineteen year old. We've been linked with him. Um, the thing is, uh, Rennes wants six point three million for him. 
I don't think that deal will be done because, you know, 6.3 million pounds, I, uh, I don't think the board will pay that for a right back. I just don't, even though we sold Jeremy Fringpong for what? 10 million quid? Uh, 11.5 million quid? Um, we sold Jeremy Fringpong last January for that there, right back, what, he was 19, 20 years old. He came in last season, he started the season well, and as games went on, right, people were clamoring to watch him play, and as games went on, he's great going forward. Defensively naive, that could be taught to a 19, 20-year-old. He was defensively naive, he was caught, you know, he was caught time and time again out of position. I write back, uh, this club's a mess. <laughs> Celtic club was a mess last season, you know, and he left in January for Baron Leverkusen for 11.5 million, you know, and John Joe Kenny came in. He was defensively better. He was defensively better than uh, than Fring Pomp, but going forward, he wasn't as good as Fring Pomp. So, yeah, it was like a double-edged sword in, in that way. Um, you know, so we gained, you know, uh, he came in on loan from Everton and he's left also in the summer, you know, and that only leaves us with one right back at the club, Anthony Ralston. So we need cover there, ASAP. Now you midfield. Ah, <laughs> oh, geez, where do I start here? Right. Scott Brown left in the summer. He went to Aberdeen. So midfield's a mess. Um, we need someone coming. I have a few ideas on who I'd like to see come in. They're not going to come in, no. Uh, the boarding, the boarding looking at these players. If they are, I'd be impressed, you know. And I'm not going to mention names, but there's two or three, there's two or three young players. I would like the board go get. Uh, we signed yesterday. Uh, Yuao. Laurel Yuao. Um, He's a he's a central mid he's a defensive central midfield player from um from Watford. Um, you know, he's he looks big and strong. He's nineteen years of age. Another youngster coming to the team. You know, um, you know, uh, we signed him for a de de developmental fee for what I think it was a hundred thousand. Hundred grand, which, you know, in the scheme of things is not a lot of money. He's 19 years old. He looks like he's an Ireland under 21 international, you know. So, you know, uh, being Irish, you know, um, I hope I hope maybe he can get onto the first team and make an impact because, you know, he looks something that we don't have in there. He looks big. He looks strong. He looks quick. He gets across the field well. You know, if he can get a great first touch and get that ball forward, you know, Celtic would de desperately need that. Um, Celtic had a lot of injuries last season too. Um, uh, going a little bit forward, uh, Ryan Christie looks like he's leaving the club either in the summer or in January. His contract's up in January. I think the board will sell, get as much money for him now during the summer if they can. Um, if somebody wishes to January, he wants to go. He said he wants to go to the Premier League. So, you know, it looks like Ryan Christie wants to go. Uh, Callum McGregor's agent came out on Thursday. Or no, sorry, Wednesday. Came out on Wednesday, and basically he said Callum McGregor uh, wants to play in the Premier League also which is bad freaking news for Celtic because uh, I don't think Celtic were prepared for this type of thing, um, you know. So, yeah, I don't think Celtic were prepared for, uh, are prepared to lose him. If they lose him, you know, our midfield is ripped bare. Uh, we got Luke O'Connell in there, um... He's a young. He's another young Irish prospect. Um, we got Scott Robinson. He can come in. 
these guys are unproven, unproven at this level. So you know, the, you know their risks basically, uh, basically what we're taking our risks if we take these guys. And Ewan Henderson can also come in and he can play central midfield player. He would be my preferred choice. Um, when he's come in, he's impressed me. His pass and his movement. You know, when he's coming, he's impressed. So, yeah, I would like Ewan Henderson to come in. He's a Scottish under-21 international. I think he's a good player. He looks neat and tidy on the ball. He can get around the pitch. He's got good energy. I think he would be the guy stepping up to come in. Um, you know, wingers. We signed two wingers. We signed a Japanese, a Kai Gucci. Um... He looks to be an exciting 26-year-old professional from the J-League. He's the top goal scorer in the Japanese uh, football league. He, 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 plays, he plays left wing. Um, he looks quick from what I've seen of him. He looks like he can beat a player. He looks composed in front of goal. You know, um, yeah, uh, we signed him yesterday uh, on the left wing. I'm excited about this. Like, I I really am. I really am excited about uh, Kawaguchi coming in. Finally, some good news for Celtic. Um, in the left wing, uh, we lost Mohamed Elanoussi, also on loan from Southampton. Uh, you know, and he had points last season where he was our best player, and then points last season where. He didn't look like majority of it where, you know, he didn't, he just didn't perform. He underperformed, you know. And we signed a right winger, uh, Abala, uh, Leo, Leo Abala, um, Israel International, our, a young Israel International, 19 years of age. He looks like he's quick, plenty of energy. Um, you know, he looks like he scores a lot of goals. Um, you know, plenty of energy. Um, you know, uh, I can see him coming and being a second, second hand signing for uh, behind uh, James Forrest, who was also injured a lot last season. You know, uh, yeah, he was injured a lot last season, and. Yeah, that's pretty much, you know, uh, we need to cover for there anyway. And the board went out and got it. And apparently it cost $4.3 So, you know, I'm expecting a lot from a 19-year-old that cost $4.3 million for Celtic. You know, so the board the board has spent uh, a total of $9 million quid on two players, on Kaguchi, on... Uh, on... On... Uh, Abala, and also another four uh, four point three million on uh, for four point five million on Starfelt. Looks like that deal will be done soon. Um, you know, so yeah, that's pretty much what I see there. Now up front, the mess up front. Alton Edward will leave the club this summer. I have no doubt in my mind. He he doesn't want to be at Celtic. Um, he has said this. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be there anymore. Um, apparently. Apparently he uh, he wanted to go last summer, and the club said, "Please stay with us for one more year, and help, try to help us win ten in a row." Um, uh, yeah. Uh, he he'll be gone. And that leaves us Albion, Al Yeti, and uh, Lee Griffiths up front. We have sold two players already up there. Bio, uh, Jochen Bio. Uh, we sold them to Gukon in the second uh, second tier of the French League. I think it's Gukon. I think it's Gukon. Um, I think that's how you pronounce them. And who else? Who else did we? Uh, Patrick Clamalla to New York Red Bulls. The uh, 
the young Polish striker. So we sold these two guys, um, you know, and that's an area where we also need clarification to come in because I don't think Abel Ayeti, who we signed last season for four point five million, him and Barakas were the two main signings. You know, um, I don't think Abel Ayeti can score 25, 30 goals a season. He doesn't look fit. Um, he didn't play a lot last season, I'll give him that. But when he played, he looked disjointed. You know, but he wasn't the only one. A lot of players last season looked disjointed. A lot of players were injured. It seemed like, it seemed like every area where Celtic looked strong last season, injuries hit. James Forrest, uh, Christopher Julian, you know, um, you know, to name two, to name two things. I think if those two guys. Let me tell you something about James Forrest. James Forrest just not good going forward. He also works hard and helps back the defender. He, you know, for the right winger. Uh, Christopher Julian had something. It's very different when he's at six foot. He's six foot five, six foot six. He, you know, he's a he's a big lad. He's quick across the field. You know, he he got a lot of headers. Um, he won a lot of headers in the opponent's boxes for us as well. You know, and he scored a few goals last season, or the season before. You know, so. You know, um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much how I feel about that. Um, you know, but he got injured. You know, so Celtic missed that last season. And he was injured for the majority of the season. James Forrest, I think, got injured around November. And he was, out for, he was out for the rest of the season. You know, can he play 50 or 60 games? So Abada coming in, you know, may take some of the pressure off. You know, if he can settle one quick, that would be good. Uh, Karaguchi. I guarantee you will be the first choice left winger this season. Uh, Arns Postacoglu, um, he wants to play a 4 3 free formation. Um, it looks like he wants to play an aggressive attacking style football. You know, and I forgot about midfield. Uh, another signing we made, uh, another de developmental player, uh, Liam Shaw. I think we signed him for what, 300 grand? Um, you know, in preseason, he looked like a bright light. You know, so yeah, and also right wing. I'm hoping Ant Postecoglou may also give Karamoko Dembele an opportunity. You know, because I think he deserves. I think he deserves a run in the team because when he's played, he look he look calm, he look composed. He played uh, midweek there in the preseason game, and you know, a terrible, terrible tackle. An absolute, you know, back, you know, just caught him in the back, back of the heel, type thing, you know, on on the young man. So he's eighteen years old now, you know. But he he caught he caught a very bad tackle, and what I like about Abanga coming in, right? He's nineteen years old. He's already played seven day. He's already played seven day uh, pro games, or you know, he's already played seven day games for the first team. You know, so he, he, you know, he, he, he was a regular, he was a regular in, in his team for Israel, you know, you know, in his team, uh, you know, so he's coming in, he says he's fit, he's ready to go, which I like, but yeah, no, there's a lot of problems, there's a lot of problems at Celtic, if Austin Edward comes in, we do need another striker, and this is the thing, I do hope the board are on this. I do hope the board are looking at players because Greg Taylor ain't good enough. Barkas, big problems. Uh, okay, we'll go Barkas, big problems. Scott being not good enough to be Celtics number one. Um, You know, big questions on Barkas. Left back, Greg Taylor ain't good enough. Right back, Anthony Ralston ain't good enough. We didn't lose two central defenders. You know, um, you know, so yeah, that 
that's pretty much we need two central we need two central uh two central defenders we need four players at the back starfield comes in that's a start you know we still need a we still need another center back for me to cover because you know Stephen Welsh is the only properly fit center back he'll probably get game time next season you know Christopher Julian's out to uh they're saying October maybe November you know and when he comes back will he will he get fit because he's been out a while so you know it'll take him take him time to come back so we still need two central defenders for me um you know I'm not trying to be greedy and not try that's a rebuilding season you know I'm not trying to be greedy I'm just saying what we need um you know midfield we need to replace Scott Bryan um and also also uh, Ryan Christie if Callum McGregor goes that's another player we need in the door you know, and we had to find players with the same quality of these guys are better than these guys coming in. You know, they have to be ready to step into the first team and step up. You know, if these guys leave because, oh, according to the agent, Callum McGregor wants to leave. You know, James Forrest, can he play 40, 50 games a season? I don't know if he can. Um, you know. Uh, 50, 60 games a season. I don't think he can. So it's nice to have Abala in there, and he's also got Karamoko Dabelli. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Karamoko does get game time, and you know, is fit. You know, and yeah, who else? You know, uh, Karaguchi. And we, even at that, there we still need another left winger because if he gets injured. We have nobody really to come into that left wing. This is how bad uh, the board has run this team. Like, I think they've I think they've uh, left us short in a lot of positions. You know, we don't really have players to come in and you know be first team starters, and that's also that's also uh, manager's fault because they've not really developed youth players. You know, does not left the road open for youth players to come in to be developed, and that's down to that's down to the board that or to the management team coming in, right? Um, John Kennedy replaced Neil Lennon, you know, as caretaker manager, and we weren't going to win the league. And he basically had four months to experiment, and the only player he really brought in was Stephen Welsh was the only player who constantly got game time and Stephen Walsh was one of the best players. You know, but you know, he could have brought he could have brought in a couple of youngsters up to the first team, you know, and said go and impress, but he didn't do that. You know, and uh yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um there's a lot of there's a lot of things the Celtic need to do. They need eight nine players in the door quickly as possible and that you know that doesn't include that doesn't include the four players they've already brought in you know um three of them three of them will be around the first team but that don't you know that don't that don't include that don't include young Luau and Yudagiri who I think I think will play parts next season but I don't see him playing he may get 10 games Maybe out of it, maybe may play league cups and all that there. You know, but I don't see him playing in the league constantly, you know. A Celtic lack players, maybe he may get an extra game or two, but you know, um at the beginning of the season to a Celtic do bring in players. But you know, another centre back, maybe he may get a few extra games, but that's due down to the lack of uh, first team availability. So yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. Um, this video went a little bit longer than I thought it would. I'd like to thank you guys for coming in and listening to my first uh, Celtic video. Um, yeah, I'm not excited about the season coming up. I'm hesitant about the season coming up because the board... The board have to come out swinging now and it's time to spend money.
you've made a lot of money off players over the last five, six years. Time now to come and spend. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Everyone have a good one. And peace, guys. Peace.